uh, you, we've now reached a point, uh, actually, uh, in the in the effort to uh, do something at least uh, to rehabilitate uh, uh, Haiti. What can be? What more can be done? Or what are the real needs of, of Haiti today? Well, as of today, we're still meeting those emergency needs. The hurricanes are coming. This is hurricane season, and we really don't have the kind of shelter that we'd like to have for Haiti. Uh, we have temporary shelter. We have some tents. We have some tarps, plastic tarps, uh, that are being used. Of course, you couldn't get the housing built fast enough no. in order to house people in permanent shelter prior to these hurricane coming. So we're doing the very best that we can uh, to get some shelter uh, prior to these, uh, the rainy season. In addition to that, uh, we have more hospital and medical services on the ground, uh, and we need to make sure uh, that we have a better uh, complement of medical services, because even with what we have done with the shelter, uh, when the rains come, there's going to be some spread of disease. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all of those, that emergency work is still in process. Beyond that, we've got to build housing, and I mean a lot of housing, permanent housing uh, for Haitians. Well, you're chairman of the subcommittee, are you not? Um, yes, I'm chairman of the committee. I'm not on the Foreign Affairs Committee, no. but I'm chairman of the subcommittee on housing and community opportunities. What we have is uh, we have planning that is going on by Haiti itself and planning in conjunction with uh, the um, committee that has been designated as the oversight committee uh, where Bill Clinton will be working with the Prime Minister of Haiti uh, to oversee the planning committee uh, so that there's a governance issue and accountability by the Haitian government for how it um, helps to uh, spend the money that we're going to uh, be recruiting from all of these international donors. Uh, we have uh, our USAID involved. We have the private sector involved. Uh, and so we think that despite the horror of all of this, it's an opportunity to develop Haiti, the new Haiti that is being referred to, uh, the Haiti that will have building codes, the Haiti that will have uh, an infrastructure, the Haiti that will have new water systems, the Haiti that will have schools rebuilt, uh, clinics and hospitals. So we take this opportunity uh, to involve everybody and to involve Haiti and some of the non uh, uh, government organizations working with the government and the international community to try to get it right and to do a, it in such a way that we can um, help Haiti to realize its full potential. Well, you have long been interested in Haiti. Yes. What prompted your interest in Haiti particularly? Well, uh, I think I'm in, I got interested in Haiti for a number of reasons. I learned about the history of Haiti. Here was an African-American country. The slaves uh, had been brought to this island uh, by the French, and they fought off the French. They were brave, and even though the They're French... They were the only country that yes, has ever... the first country yeah. in the world to uh, uh, fight off uh, the... Uh, Enslavement. The slave master, them. and they won. Mm -hmm. uh, they fought a valiant fight, and of course they paid a high price for it. Uh, France then surrounded the island with all of its might, and uh, they worked out an agreement uh, where Haiti would have to pay uh, the French uh, for having defeated them. And so uh, they paid and paid and paid, and when President Aristide finally came in, one of the things he was asking for was reparations, because Haiti had been unfairly charged by the French. Uh, they had been paying all of these years. Uh, as you know, the uh, Haiti has gone through dictators, mm -hmm. Papa Doc and Baby Doc, and we occupied Haiti, the United States, for a while. Uh, we destroyed their ag agriculture. Uh, you know, they used to raise all the rice for their country, but uh, when we finished with um, our efforts to control Haiti, we imported rice uh, from the American Rice Company here in, in the United States. And it's been that way for years, whether it was Canada or France or the United States. Uh, we all took opportunities to extract from Haiti rather than to support Haiti, unfortunately. And it's left Haiti um, in the situation that it is today. But I see 
an effort being put forth by this country, led by the President of the United States of America and our Secretary of State, uh, to help Haiti and perhaps to make up for all that uh, we did not do historically. And I see that coming from the French and from the others. French as well. oh, the French, very much involved, very much committed, very much, um, you know, committing. Uh, for its uh, donations to Haiti, and I think that um, I think that it's going to work. I, I'm very optimistic about, about Haiti's future. How about the political situation there? Is it conducive to, uh, 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 in some way, helping these efforts to rehabilitate? Well, uh, what we have is um, we have a government, uh, a president who has um, is termed out. He's, um, you know, his second term has come to an end. It is impossible to hold the elections there now because of the devastation. But mm -hmm. we think by the end of the year, perhaps by November, we will, they will be holding the elections. There will be great oversight. Mm -hmm. There will be great planning. The CEP is the organization in Haiti that does the planning. But the international community is going to work with them uh -huh. to make sure that the polling places are throughout Haiti, uh, that the counting is proper, uh, and that the elections are held um, in a way that people can rely upon uh, a credible government. Uh, so we're going to assist with the governance issues in making sure uh, that their parliament is operating, that their judicial systems are operating, and that uh, they're able to govern and manage the, company, the country uh, the way that a democracy should be run and managed. So we'll be working with all of that as we are helping uh, to work with the private and the public sector for the development. Uh, so many uh, events occur throughout the world and there's a focus upon that area uh, for a short period of time. And then the public and the world looks to another area. How do you keep going the interest in Haiti uh, that will facilitate uh, the rebuilding of Haiti? What has happened to Haiti over the years is uh, a number of members of Congress have paid close attention. We never stopped. Uh, from the time that I got involved, when President Clinton uh, was uh, still in and he returned Aristide after there had been a coup, uh, mm -hmm. uh, he returned Aristide. Uh, President Bertrand Aristide went back to Haiti where he encountered resistance. Uh, there was something called the Group of 184 that organized um, to undermine his government because he was talking about minimum wage, he was talking about doing away with the slavery of young children who were brought down from the hills, he was talking about um, uh, paying taxes, he was talking about everything that you should be talking about in a democracy, but because there were people who had benefited from mm -hmm. uh, dictatorships yeah. who never really wanted to see a democracy because it was profitable for them to be in the uh, textile industry down there with the cheap labor, et cetera. Uh, they had no intentions of having uh, this uh, former priest coming in with all these democratic ideas and teaching people democracy and wanting to educate and get rid of the literacy there. So they were successful in demonizing President Bertrand Aristide, and there was a coup with uh, our assistance again, and they took him up to Central Africa. Republicans just dropped him. And as you know, I and uh, Randall Robinson from Trans Africa, along with some reporters and all, uh, we leased a plane and we went up and we got him. Mm. And we brought him back down to Jamaica, where uh, P.J. Patterson, who was then the prime minister down there, uh, kept him until he was able to be taken in by President Mbeki over in South Africa. And President Mbeki gave him refuge there. And uh, he's been there, and he's now writing books and working with the university. He would love to come back to Haiti, uh, but the timing is not right for him to come back to Haiti. There's still uh, those who uh, would undermine him. And so I think that we have to um, be comfortable with the fact that that's not going to happen, but we must move forward to try and get a strong governance uh, operation there and redevelop Haiti. And someday, uh, perhaps Bertrand Aristide, working with the Haitian people, can resolve uh, the problems of the past that caused him to be in exile.